Welcome to this week's episode of What Is That? where we pick apart ingredients found in our food so we can better understand what is going into our bodies. This week we're talking about Jillian gum. Jillian, 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 Jillian. Or is it Jillian? I don't know. This all started because one day I wanted to go buy buttermilk and I found a bunch of it, ingredients that are in the buttermilk that basically doesn't make it buttermilk anymore. And so I went and decided to make my own buttermilk, but I found ingredients in whipping cream that also raised questions. So I thought that I would sit down and make these videos better informing myself and you if you feel like listening. Jillian gum, it is actually used as a stabilizer and adds texture in food preparation. It was discovered in the 1970s growing naturally under lily pads if you can believe it. It was approved for use in products in 1988 with full approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in 1992. So because they felt they couldn't take it off of the lily pads, they decided to figure out a way scientifically to recreate this. And they figured out that if you take corn sugar with a bacteria, it, which is, I'm going to butcher this, Xanthomus capitreus, it's the same bacteria that's found in broccoli that makes those black spots. So they found that if they fermented this, it would form this slimy goo. And then that was then dried and milled into a fine powder. And that is what we use to stabilize the food. It is vegan and vegetarian friendly and actually um, is a good way to replace beef gelatin and a gargar if you would rather not use those things. My initial thoughts are that if you don't like using beef products because of vegetarian, vegan, or other aspects as to why you don't want to use those, it good, can be a good substitute. But if you have a sensitivity to corn, that might get a little tricky. Now, I don't know how much of like degrees of separation that is, if it's something that would affect you, but it is something to kind of look out for. But let's talk about pros and cons. Pros is that it can be a good substitute for beef gelatin. It is tested to be non-GMO and can be organic. And studies have shown that it can improve digestion. Let's talk about cons. It is not found naturally in food, so it has to be processed. Studies have shown that high amounts can cause digestional issues and can affect healthy levels of intestinal bacteria. Packaging does not inform you how much is used in each of its products. So what are my overall thoughts? So I want to remain as unbiased as possible, but I do wish that the products would tell you how much of this Jillian gum is used in each of the packaging. Also, I thought it was important to note that when I Googled, is Jillian gum healthy? The response that I got was, yes, Jillian gum is safe to consume, which is not the question that I asked. I don't know if that has to do with AI generation responses that are now coming into Google, but it's kind of sidestepping the, is this healthy, which I felt concerning. If you found this to be helpful, Follow, like, and subscribe, and comment below if you have any other additives or thoughts that you might want to include. And I'll see you guys next week.